Welcome back, everybody, to the Paper Mario playthrough. Okay, that was uh, mildly laggy, but hey, we're still here in part 17. And we're moving along to places where uh, magical stuff happens. Because we're going to be using some statues to move stat... Or was it a statue that I got? It was some... I think it was. Yeah, the raven statue. So we're going to put statues inside statues and then watch what happens. Okay. So, uh... If Indiana Jones is, you know, any indication, there's probably going to be some sort of magic going on here. Perhaps even some moving things. Oh, what's this? What the... Oh, wait. Oh, somebody actually did mention to me... Yeah, it was... Ah, I didn't notice if it said a statue of a raven. I'm pretty sure it did. Uh, somebody mentioned that if you use those... Uh, that little plant that I just did... Press A on? Press A on? Yeah. Uh, uh, if you do it in certain points, it'll actually light up where uh, some... Hidden blocks are, like, you know, if you have Watt. Uh, I think this is actually specifically the area, if I recall correctly. Oh, no! All right, well, at least I didn't... Oh, my God! Too many! Well, at least I didn't get hit by a first strike, so, you know, that all kind of worked out. All right. So, Sushi is pretty awesome with uh, defending as well. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, Star Storm, take these guys out, and then we're done here. Okay! You know, I couldn't be bothered with that ridiculous battle. Uh, she's pretty awesome with... Um, her uh, defense because she has a skill that she le she learns when you get the first super block and uh, that's water block which is actually uh, gives you one added defense for whatever set amount of turns you press A at the correct time for and actually Watt has the opposite skill where she actually gives you plus one attack for however many uh, of the turns that you correctly press A timed on it's, it's kind of weird you have to press A three times at the correct time and then for each of the times that you do, you get, uh, it's like one if you get none of them, and then four if you get all of them. Well, now, this uh, puzzle was extremely simple and super convenient because apparently th this water has just so much pressure that it can move that giant boulder. And then there we go. We just reset that. Okay. So, yeah, there's actually two different ways you can do that. You can either reset it by... Um, Taking another one of the blocks and uh, covering up that uh, that last hole that uh, pushed up the uh, pushed up the boulder, or just push away one of the other blocks. I really don't I don't like where this is going. Oh, okay. I thought both of them, or at least one of them, was gonna do his little call for help. Oh, thankfully none of them did. Take him out, Suji. Yeah. All right. So that's it for them. And uh, what do we got here? trying to oh yeah that thing that makes me that makes the emulator crash no we don't want that okay uh, we don't want that either bye oh my god uh, it's gotta be this one then this one is it is yeah he was waiting for me all right then oh there we go yes using the vault shroom so I believe I will yeah show off its extremely useful capabilities in uh, terms of them not being able to uh, take my HP you guys are really annoying. Oh, extra star bits. Points. Star points. Oh, wow. And I get a Volt Shroom back. How convenient. All right. And, uh, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we need that. Okay. Or do I have an extra space? No. Okay. Forget it. Right. We're throwing this away. What? I'm going to use it. Okay. <clears throat> that was totally necessary, I guess. You know, five extra HP. I guess I could use it. All right. So off to the woods we go. The jungle. Oh, I spy. Helping me out here. Finding me. Oh, there it is. What the? Well, first I gotta get this star piece. Sushi! Move your big fat butt! Thank you. Alrighty. So, star piece get. And uh, what was that nonsense? Oh, there's there's uh, guys over here. It's a, it's a gang. And they're doing the dance. Wait a minute. I know what's coming next. Ah! Oh, good. They got a white magic Koopa with them. So, um, at a certain point in the game, this part specifically... Uh, you'll start meeting some new Magic Koopas who do uh, new and interesting things, depending on what color they are. Um, and the white ones, if I recall, can actually make some or one of their allies invisible, like, you know, with uh, bows out of sight. Yeah, basically do that for one of the allies. It's super annoying because you literally cannot do anything to them. And uh, I think we're taking this guy out. All right. Yeah, did a pretty good job. Oh, my God. That was a lot of stuff. Now, imagine if Merle had doubled that. I would have not gotten everything. Okay. So, right, there we go. That crazy mini-boss battle. Done. You know, I don't know why I sped it up, but uh, I did. Okay, nice zoom in on this flower. Okay. 
And uh, up this crazy tree we go. We gotta save first, because that's there, and we gotta use it. Okay, so in the meantime, read some more of that uh, information. So I believe I did get to the reception. Uh, so for the reception, Paper Mario received a positive reaction from the media. IGN's Matt Casamassina praised the game's accessibility, commenting that... Oh, right, I already read that. Yeah, it serves as the perfect introductory game to any person hoping to explore the RPG genre. Also, I just picked up the Happy Heart. I think it was Heart. Uh, and that basically kind of regens my HP uh, every so often. Like, it'll just give me one HP back per turn. I think it's like half the time. And uh, it's actually very convenient. So, uh, we're going up this tree to meet a giant raven named Raphael. Which is actually that uh, crazy statue that we got. And there he is. He's a pretty big guy. And uh, we need him to be able to get into the volcano, because that is unfortunately where the Star Spirit is being held. And of course, you know, being able to get closer to saving the princess. Because, you know, if anybody forgot, that's what we're doing. Uh, so, more of the reception. Despite this, other reviewers complained that the, quote, brain-dead easy puzzles and bosses requiring basic strategy as, as at best. Basic strategy at best. All right. I mean, you know, there is a... a, a some form of strategy, you know, I mean, you could definitely mix and match badges, you know, to do certain things. Uh, but moving on, the game's nostalgic value was lauded, with reviewers noting the sense of familiarity with the Mario series present in the game's settings and characters. The game has often been compared to the previous Mario RPG title, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Eurogamer's Todd Bram Tom Bramwell judged that Paper Mario is a vastly superior game to Super Mario RPG while IGN compared the game's simple plot unfavorably with the SNES game, an RPG fan claimed that some of the- some of Paper Mario's stories was just- some of Paper Mario's story was copied from it. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess specifically? Uh, an RPG fan also questioned the name of Paper Mario, as there were, in their opinion, insufficient gameplay features or aspects which used the paper theme to justify the name. You know, they were actually pretty spot on with both of the things that they said. Uh, you know, like, specifically the seven stars thing, you know, we're, we're also trying to save seven stars in this game. Uh, that was one thing, uh, although, you know, the battle elements themselves were way different because, you know, Squaresoft made Super Mario RPG, and, uh, that was definitely more of an RPG sort of, uh, battling tactics and strategy whatnot, because you had, what was it, three? Was it three or four partners, uh, or characters out at a time? I think it was three people out at a time. And so, yeah, you know, that, that all had, like, its own sort of crazy battle s scheme and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, the other thing that they mentioned, uh, t -t 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 the, yeah, the paper theme. Yeah, I have to admit, you know, at a certain point, they just kind of just either forgot or they just stopped caring about the whole paper theme because there's not really much paper that's going on here. I mean, a lot of the stuff is just 3D. Uh, the way that characters react to things is pretty 3D, you know, aside from everybody being, you know, two-dimensional and paper-thin, but even still, you know, the way that people are able to turn around and stuff like Mario is here, uh, it doesn't make him look or seem very 2D. But anyway, um, so yeah, so, oh, also, Raphael the Raven also gives us a very important item, the Ultra Stone, which, as he explains, allows us to use any further found super blocks to upgrade my partners to ultra rank which is actually well rank two right now you know with the super block they're like upgraded to rank one or was it two anyway i'm just gonna call it one and then with the ultra rank they'll be able to upgrade even further uh learn another new move and become even stronger so that's super awesome ultra awesome sorry how you doing caw 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 oh well he's not got much to say so it's this very, very convenient pulley system that they uh, built for me to get into the volcano. I don't think I need that because I already just went to the toad house. So into the volcano we go. Look at that crazy smoke. Methane, probably. What's this? Oh, it's a... All right. A piranha plant who forgot to turn caps lock off. All right. What a big fat noob that guy is. Oh, you're in here. Of course. Well, now, let's see how you do these things. I'm sure you'll be the best at this. Oh, how convenient. Now, why can't he just have died? I don't know. Well, yeah, God, that was really big text. Well, you know he really meant that. 
So yeah, that's pretty much to uh, inform you that you probably don't want to sink into the lava because such butt burning will happen to you as well. You know, that, that has always been so convenient that uh, instead of just, well, you know, actually it depends on the game. Uh, instead of just falling into lava and dying, you know, Mario just kind of gets burnt. Uh, that, that was pretty much the story with 64, um, and was it, uh, oh yeah, uh, Galaxy, I believe, too. But yeah, Sunshine, that was an instant death in the lava. Uh, pretty much all the 2D side-scroller Mario games, that was instant death in the lava. So, uh, fairly inconsistent. So yeah, now we're fighting these guys, I forget what they're called, they're like, oh, oh, lava bubbles, that was it, yeah, lava bubbles, which are, of course, weak to the ice power that I have, you know, the ice power badge, as well as Sushi's Squirt, which, you know, because water versus fire, you know, you gotta think Pokemon here. Okay, so, uh, off into the next area we go, now there's nothing down there, and we're going on over to some more pulleys. Very convenient. What? I just noticed. I literally just noticed that this pulley is literally floating in midair. Look at that. It, it's, there's nothing hooking it. Like, there's no pipe or, you know, pole or anything holding it up. No, it's just floating there. Weird. You, you don't always think this, that, that this was a video game or something. You know, crazy, right? Hey, there's Spike Tops, those guys that were in uh, Super Mario World. You know, and, and being fairly annoying as well. So, we're doing some more badge maintaining. Or badge management, that was the word I was looking for. Oh yeah, we're gonna use spike shield here so I can actually jump on these guys. Because, you know, like I said, jumping is awesome. Uh, not only that, but jumping also knocks them back onto their shells. And jumping also helps Sushi be able to hit them as well. Which, unfortunately, she can't do right now. What? Oh, I... I think this is literally the only time I made use of group focus. And when I, when I actually did, of course, my star power meter is full. Perfect. Alright, so yeah, these guys are basically like Buzzy Beetles, just with a spike on their back. What? Oh, yeah, I remember I did that, and then I was like, no, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, that was kind of annoying. Uh, so yeah, like I mentioned before, uh, the only reason I have group focus on is because somebody misled me. I can't remember who, but it was one of the commenters, uh, one of the earlier parts, that basically m misled me to think that uh, if you have group focus on and your partners are stunned, you know, like if they get hit by something, They'll be able to use their turn. Oh, that was good. They'll be able to use their turn even if they are stunned and unable to, like, fight. But they'll be still be able to use group focus. No, that's not the case. I think what he meant was if there's, like, no way that they can attack the enemy that's in front of you, you can just use group focus instead. Which is pretty much the story for Mario. So, yeah, there we go. Yeah, now I took it off because... Oh, right! I, yeah, that was it. I purposely got Sushi Hurt there. And I wanted to test it, and it was like, Sushi can't move! And I was like, oh my god. Well, I was lied to. Whatever. Okay, so, what? Uh, using Watt there, and uh, not quite figuring out that uh, yeah, there's nothing there. I actually needed to use Cooper to knock down that block and get that POW. But, uh, what's the point of having a POW block at this point? It does two damage. Two damage! That's terrible. I have the snowman dolls, like, I think I have two of them. Uh, that do four damage. You know, that's twice as much. Yeah, take that power block. Power block. Why did I call it power block? Because I'm pretty sure there's an item in the game called a power block. Hmm. Whatever. So we're doing uh, some crazy jump rope once again with these fire sticks. Boy, I just love messing with these guys. Look at how mad they're getting. He's all like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. And then he's like, oh, and then he just throws up into a bunch of coins. Alrighty. He, he got all dizzy there, was the intention of what I meant. Alrighty then. It's not like he just decided to go on spring break there for a while, and then came back and he was all drunk. Okay. So jump, <laughs> jump rope in these guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Fire sticks are on spring break. Go figure. And uh, yeah, taking them out flawlessly. I think those are literally the only ones in the game. There was those two in the Cooper Bros Fortress, and then these three. So I think in the entire game, there's only five fire sticks. So we're going to ultra rank someone, and I believe I was going to start with Watt, because, you know, like I said, she is so OP. I, couldn't, I could not decide between Watt or Bo, or also Sushi, yeah, because she, she learns Tidal Wave, which is unbelievably useful. Yeah, yeah, I decided to go with Sushi, because uh, Tidal Wave is, like, super useful. Uh, for the uh, the boss, 
might as well just go ahead and say that now. Ooh, that was spoilers. Okay, so out of here we go. Ultra ranking sushi. She's the first one to rank th uh, two, three. What was it that I was calling it? I don't even care. Ultra rank. We'll just call it that. That's more simple. All right. So down these crazy steps we go, and uh, look who's not waiting for us. Oh, I thought he was gonna be here, but uh, I think he shows up here later. Uh, I was talking about Colorado, by the way. Oh, very convenient. The fire shield badge. Any damage that Mario takes from fire enemies is reduced by one. Numero uno. Uh, so what was it? I believe it takes two. Wow. Okay. I don't even know what I took off for that. Probably Quake Hammer and uh, something else. Probably I Spy, I think. Because, you know, you know, to be honest, like, I don't really super, like, have any super necessity for star pieces. I mean, they are useful for one specific reason, and that's actually getting badges. And uh, just the majority of the badges that you can get with star pieces I don't really need. So, I Spy, not super necessary. But what is necessary here is Paracarry. We need him to... What? There we go. Uh, we need him to uh, flutter on us on over here so that we can use these very conveniently placed blocks. Of course, there just happens to be three of them. It's almost like they knew Mario was coming here and just thought to themselves, hmm, he'll never be able to figure out this one. Ha ha ha, we're villains. We're very smart. And then that sort of cuts off the flow of the lava to uh, a very convenient gap with that uh, Paracarry can flutter over. So now we can do that down here and move on. Of course, the uh, the stones here aren't, you know, super hot, you know, like molten lava hot or anything. You know, no, nope, they're just instantly cooled. All right. So then this requires a little bit of thinkings. So we're going to have to just use these two specific blocks that conveniently don't happen to <clears throat> get washed away by the tide of the lava. And then use those two, and then what do you know? That gives us just enough space to be able to flutter on over with Paracarry. Yay! Alrighty then, so uh, we're gonna... Okay, we're apparently going to keep... Oh, hello, White Magic Koopa. <coughs> we're going to keep Paracarry for this. Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, I probably could have used a uh, shell... What's this thing called? Shell shot? Shell shot, I think? Whatever. I probably could have used that on the fire guys, because if Cooper is any indication... Oh my god, that was a huge jerk move. I know, that was like super fast and... Oh wow, thank you! I know that was super fast and pretty much almost unable to be seen, but apparently the lava bubbles have an attack where they can, they, they can single out your partner instead of hitting you. Very jerkish. So, uh, what are, we're going with BP this time? I was really thinking about it. I was like, hmm, you know, I got like these... I got like some crazy badges I'd like to equip, and I am kind of high leveled. Okay, we're going with BP. Uh, we're still keeping Paracarry out. There we go. Wait, what? Oh. So yeah, like I said, if Cooper was any indication, I probably could have hit uh, the lava bubbles while Paracarry was in his shell. Now here's the red magic Koopas. Now these guys can give offense up or attack power up, whatever, uh, to allies, and that's very unfortunate. Luckily. Sushi was able to take him out before he could hit me. I didn't want to be hit for an extra damage. An extra bit of damage. That's what I meant. An extra damage. Okay, so we're gonna dizzy attack. Don't know why. I just felt like it. And refund. Because, you know, I use items in battle all the time. So, uh, now very conveniently, here's a new hammer. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, now the hammer is super powered. It's ultra powered, I suppose you could say. Uh, it is ultra ranked and it can now destroy red metal blocks. Yes. See, we were only able to destroy the uh, the wimpy, I want to call them wooden yellow blocks, and then it was the grayish stone blocks. Now it's the red metal boxes. Man, we're going up. We're moving up in the world. Look at how shiny and metal it is, and then it just breaks apart because I'm so strong. Strongman Mario! Mario is just rip rippling with muscles. I mean, look at those huge arms he's got. Man, I I'm surprised that the enemies in this game just don't run from him when they see him. Come on. He will rip you in half. He's the new Chuck Norris. This is a stomp. There's another useless badge, at least to me it is. Hello. Oh, yes, I decided to use Dizzy Attack, and uh, that's what Dizzy Attack does. It makes him dizzy for one hit. Look at him. <laughs> I love that face. Oh, yeah. Getting blocked. 
So yeah, it took me a little while, but I was definitely able to learn the timing of their poison attacks. Because those things are so annoying. I can't stand those attacks. Uh, and of course, it's really convenient when they decide to do the poison attack. Because if I do block it, I take literally no damage. Whereas if they decided to bite me, I would take like, I think it's two damage. Alright then, so para carry being super awesome and useful again, we're gonna need him, unfortunately, for this volcano to get around places. But uh, hey, you know, it's very convenient that uh, all of the gaps that I need to cross are just enough so that para carry can uh, carry me across them. Uh, are we going with Watt here? Because, yeah, I was gonna say, you know, this the spike top guy. Why did I do that? That did nothing. Woo. Okay then, so, oh, okay. Oh my god, I hate these lava bubbles. Go away. So, uh, yeah, oh, so I think, if I recall correctly, these uh, these guys only have, like, two, three HP? No, oh, I think it's three HP. But, uh, yeah, Watt shredding those defenses and uh, giving him an instant four damage. Come here, you putrid piranha. Come on. I was kind of, okay. I was kind of waiting for him, you know, because I was, like, over there, so I thought maybe he'd try to get me again. No, that was just too much to ask for. See, now, if you would have come over to me, I should probably be using my hammer instead. That probably... Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow, it does six damage now. That's uh, significantly more than the shoes, which do four total. Alrighty, then. So, uh, we're just going to stop here and say that's it for this part of the Paper Mario playthrough. Join me in part 18, where I'll be traversing more of this crazy volcano and hopefully trying to get to that crazy star spirit. See you all next time.